Sports Radio 92.9, the game. I'm Bill Schindler, and our guest is a former big league player, manager, now a proud grandfather. Managed the Dodgers, Pirates, Rockies. Uh, Jim was the 2009 Manager of the Year in the National League. He served on the staffs of Felipe Alou, Davey Johnson, and he's mentored some of the biggest names in the big leagues. And now he's joining us tonight. It's Jim Tracy. And, Jim, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Bill, and thanks for asking. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm currently, I guess, the best way to put it to you is I'm currently finding that, uh, you know, there's there, there, there are some very special things outside the game that uh, I haven't had much chance uh, to explore over the course of the past 33 years. And uh, I heard you allude to it in the introduction, you know, between my son Brian and my son Chad. Uh, my wife and I have three beautiful grandchildren, and so over the course of the two past two plus years, uh, we've spent our time uh, moving around, seeing our grandchildren, doing some things that we were completely unable to do over the course of a 162 game baseball season, and trying to l- lower my handicap too, Bill, but doing that very <laughs> unsuccessfully. We all are doing that same thing, Jim. Um, yeah. Let's talk here about the Braves for a little bit. Uh, they made a lot of changes this year. It's a new look team. Uh, you know, you've gone in and managed three major league teams. You've had changes while you were in in that organization. Um, what's it like to have a team that is essentially a bunch of new faces in the locker room a year after the team starts to rebuild? Well, you know, I, I'll say this uh, first of all. You know, it's very important to uh, realize and understand that there's a plan, uh, obviously, in place. And I don't think John Hart uh, needs any introduction whatsoever to the fact of how successful uh, he has been over the years as a general manager. And, And probably, and this is obviously, Bill, a complete guess because I'm not privy to any of this, uh, you know, when they were going back and forth uh, early uh, this past off season uh, as to who was going to replace Frank Wren, uh, and they started to earmark John as a potential guy to do it, um, my guess would be that there was uh, a very serious sit down about the fact that, hey, look, you know, if I'm going to participate and do this on a full time basis, uh, there's some things that I want to do. Uh, you know, there, there's some teardown I want to do in order to rebuild. Uh, and uh, he probably felt very strongly that the time was now to do some of those things. You go back and look at his track record back in the day with the Cleveland Indians. Uh, and if, if you're aware of that, then you're obviously no stranger to the fact that this process uh, that he is currently going through uh, – you know, turned into something very, very special in Cleveland for a number of years. I think the important adjective here is the patience that will be necessary as they go through the process because there are some growing pains with it. Uh, There becomes unfamiliarity in your clubhouse with a cohesiveness. You have to regather that. There will be more change uh, that continues to go on uh, as you move forward. And eventually, uh, I'm sure that uh, he's very hopeful of the fact that it turns into something very, very special, uh, you know, that the Cleveland Indians realized over the course of about a seven- or eight-year period or for what, you know, whatever length of period of time that was. I'll tell you this, quite frankly, I'm rooting for him because I think John Hart is – uh, he's one of the finer uh, management baseball people in the game, has been for a number of years. And any time I have had an occasion to uh, encounter him, uh, I've experienced nothing but uh, just a fine gentleman and a real, real professional in our sport. Jim, Freddie Gonzalez, who manages the Braves, took a lot of heat last year. Um, a lot of people were calling for his firing what is it like and how do you deal with people in the media folks who get on the radio like me who are questioning your moves they call for your job how do you deal with that uh you know something you know going in bill 
you know going in that it comes with the territory. And this is something, and I heard you in the intro make mention to a couple of the very special managers that I had the privilege of working for as a bench coach uh, before I did my 11 years uh, in the major leagues. And, you know, the guy that I'm referring to in this case, or the two guys that were, were Felipe Alou and Davey Johnson, as you mentioned, but in this case it's Davey Johnson, who sat me down one day uh, and, and, and talked very frankly to me about the fact of just exactly what you mentioned, that, you know, that it goes on, Bill, and that, you know, you can't allow that to deter your thought process you know, you can't allow that to influence any of your decision-making. Uh, as Davey put it to me years ago, hey, look, this is your job, and you ultimately will be responsible to answer to anything and everything that goes on. And so his point of reference and his point of emphasis, Bill, was make sure that you do it your way because ultimately when push comes to shove, you're going to be held responsible for all of it. As well you should be, Bill. As well you should be. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're paid to do a job. You're paid very well to do that job. And so part of the territory that comes with it uh, are media people like yourselves and other people in different venues that are all going to have their opinions one way or another and do their, their measure of second-guessing. Uh, you can't let that bother you. You have to keep your blinders on, and you have to you have to maintain the vision that you have of what it is you want to get accomplished with this ball club in relation to the ability that you have in your clubhouse, uh, and not let anything on the outside of that deter the direction that you're heading in, good, bad, or otherwise. Sports Radio ninety two nine, the game. We're visiting with Jim Tracy. And last season as well, there were some chemistry issues uh, out there, at least in some reports about the Braves. Uh, there are two sides to the argument about chemistry, Jim. Some think it's essential to have a team that has great chemistry if you're going to be successful. But you have the other side of the argument with the Bronx Zoo Yankees, the Billy Martin teams, where they were winning while they were physically fighting each other. Does chemistry really matter, or can you really just go out and, and, and win with a team that hates each other but have good players? Well, I guess to answer the last part of the question, in my opinion, yes, you can. Uh, and I think you're bringing up a great point, Bill. Uh, and that is, you know, how do you define chemistry, quote unquote, if you will, in a clubhouse, on a ball club? Uh, you know, I, I, I think that the thing that we have to look at here uh, and realize is you're going to have chemistry, Bill, when everything is going exactly the way that you want it, want it to do. All the dominoes are falling exactly the way you want them to. You know, you're winning. You're you're finding ways to win every day. Everything is just terrific. Uh, you can't, you know, you, you look forward to the following day. You can't wait to get to the ballpark. I personally feel, you know, to me, the word chemistry and the importance of it and does a club have that type of cohesiveness and things like that, it's not during these times. It's when the ball club is tested, when the metal of the club is tested, and believe me when I tell you, over the course of 162 games, the medal of all 30 clubs this year at some point in time will be tested. One of my former players in Los Angeles, Robin Ventura, I think in relation to what we're talking about, said it so very well. We were sitting, he and I, uh, back in 2004 uh, and having a conversation one day. And uh, he looked at me. We got to talking about this same subject matter. Uh, that you are alluding to. And, you know, Robin was a huge piece for us uh, in 2004 uh, when we acquired him and ended up uh, being a part of the uh, divisional championship in L.A. that we won. Uh, he looked at me, Bill, and said, you know, Skip, he said, the, the, the key to any major league season uh, in my opinion, he said, is knowing that every one of our clubs, meaning all 30 teams in baseball, at some point in time, they're going to have problems. Uh, 
uh, every single one of them. But the ones that w- will end up coming out on top and play baseball games in October that other teams won't are the ones that figure out quicker than the others what the problems are, address them, get them solved, and move forward. And, it, you know, I, I just thought that was such a revealing conversation because it plays right into what you and I are talking about right now. To me and for me, Bill, when, when, when you have a ball club that uh, the question of chemistry comes up, or if you have a ball club that handles adversity uh, and does it very, very well, to me that's a ball club that gets it. That's a ball club that's going out every day and doing whatever it needs to do to score one more run than the other team, and they don't really care who does it, how they get it done. It's just that the Braves or the Reds or the Red Sox or the Yankees or any other club in baseball, they know what they have to do, and they go out and they score one more run than the other team. Visiting with Jim Tracy, and, of course, Jim taking the time to visit with us. We thank him for that. We're going to have more of the interview and sit down with him as, of course, a, a guy who, well, knows a lot about baseball. And we're going to ask him what the biggest fads are, the shift, if he'd ever want to manage again. And we'll play a little game with him that we like to call Schindler's List. So we have that to look forward to here on 92.9, the sports phone. Just want to remind you, right now we are doing a, a bit of an interview with Jim Tracy, but the Solomon Brothers text line 229 229- Two nine and four zero four seven four one zero nine two nine the wade dot com hotline. Back with more Jim Tracy in a moment here on ninety two nine the game.